So we're wrapping up our series on worship. We've talked about worship being remembrance. And remembering reminds us how we ought to be. We talked about what we remember while we worship. We talked about how we remember who God is. We remember who we are. And we remember what everything else means in the light of those two truths. I want to give you fi one final exhortation as we part. Sometimes it can be hard to want to remember. Sometimes it can feel like a lot to even show up to places of remembrance. I do believe that they're important for the life of a mature believer to carve out time and space to be with the Lord, to remind one's heart the ultimate truth above any other truth. I do believe that it's important to come together in the fellowship of believers. And as Jesus would say, to do this in remembrance of me. All throughout scripture we've seen that the one word that we've been pointed back to is to remember, is to remember. To remember the stories that we've been told from Sunday school all the way up to our adult lives to remember our own personal experiences and our history with God, to remember and to not forget all that God has done for us, all that he has promised us and all that he will continue to do. I can hear almost Moses' voice now, remember to not forget, remember to remember. Don't forget to remember. I want to challenge you to set up daily inconveniences in your life to slow down what the world says you should be doing every single day and to carve out time to remember. I promise you that the quality of your thought life, the quality of your prayer life, the quality of even your regular life will really increase when you allow your heart and your mind to come into agreement and to remember. There's something really sacred, there's something really holy about remembrance. Sometimes it can be hard to remember, so I want to encourage you with this. Romans 12, 1 through 2, and this is from the message. You've, you've probably heard this verse a million times, but I love the way that it, it says this in the message. So I want to read this. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you, of course. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping. You're eating. You're going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embrace what God does for you because it's the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. I love where it says, take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around, and place it before God as an offering. You know, for so many years we've been told that when you come into the presence of the Lord, you have to be nice and neat and clean and all the things you've done, you have to be repented from, you gotta be on your P's and Q's to make sure that what God has to say to you can actually get to you. And I love what Paul says here. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You know, that means the, the, the parts of your life that aren't glamorous, the parts of your life that don't involve putting on makeup or having to wear a nice suit or having to be well put together. The everyday, ordinary parts of your life. Take those parts and offer them up to God as a sacrifice. I love that idea, I love that thought. What would it look like if we truly embodied that? What would it look like if we truly carved out times 
of remembrance. What would it look like if we heeded to the gentle, still small voice of the Lord saying, don't forget, remember. Remember when I did that thing for you. Remember when that thing actually happened. Remember that story in the Bible that's just like the situation that you're going through right now. Take time out, slow down, give me your everyday, ordinary life, and remember. John 4, 23 through 24. This is also in the message. It's who you are and the way that you live that count before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is out looking for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves before Him in their worship. God is sheer being Himself. Those who worship Him must do it out of their very being, their spirits, their true selves in adoration. Wow, I love that. What an encouragement. God is looking for, and I quote, those who are simply and honestly themselves before Him in their worship. You don't have to know all the answers. You don't have to understand. You don't even have to be what you think you need to be. You just need to be honest. You just need to be open. You just need to be available. You just need to carve out time to say yes. And the good thing about him is that he takes the weakest yes. He just wants a yes from you. Give him your everyday ordinary life. Give him your simple and your honest self in worship. Worship is remembrance and remembering reminds us how we ought to be. It reminds us who God is. It reminds us who we are. It reminds us how everything else in our lives needs to look in light of those two truths. And it reminds us that we can bring ourselves fully honest, fully alive, fully whatever to Him and to let Him touch it just again.